Before starting the presentation, I would like to talk to you about my ambitions after assuming the presidency. I have been mainly in charge of financial, accounting, and capital markets at the main sponsor, Sojitsu Corporation, and thus have certain knowledge of the financial side. Jarring also on the two and a half year experience in real estate at Nippon REIT, I am determined to keep concentrating all of my efforts on tackling this sector. I intend to make use of the experience gained from managing organizations both in Japan and abroad to bring out the maximum potential of this organization by having all of its executives and employees targeting the same goal. While adhering to the Nippon REIT's asset management policy so far, the company shall, under my presidency, continue to make utmost efforts to maximize the unit holder's value and thus meet the expectations of all its investors. In the eighth period that ended June 2016, Nippon REIT achieved a net income of 2,944 million yen. That makes for a DPU of 7,519 yen. We thus forecast a net income of 2,893 million yen and a DPU of 7,385 yen for the ninth period ending December 2016. Our forecast for the 10th period ending June 2017 includes a net income of 2,913 million yen and a DPU of 7,436 yen. Here, you can see the DPU transition. The colored sections projecting from the gray column graphs represent the achievements. I believe that is clearly visible that results have exceeded forecasts in all cases. On the right, you can see the growth in NAV per unit. The graph shows how our NAV per unit has been growing steadily from 248,000 482 yen at the end of the fourth period to 309,614 yen in the eighth period. Next, you have here the highlights of achievements and the summary of strategies for our future growth. Let's start with the external growth strategy. We haven't acquired any new property during this past period, which means we maintained the number of assets under management at 65. Also, the AUM stood at the same acquisition price of 204.8 billion yen, while striving to achieve the AUM target of 300 billion by between 2018 and 2020, we have been granted preferential negotiation rights for the properties we are currently warehousing in three bridge funds as of the end of the period under review. We will continue to pursue external growth in a disciplined way. As for internal growth, the occupancy rate, which had temporarily fallen during the term, managed to recover and thus stood at 95.9% as of June 2016. Moreover, in the same period, we recorded a rent increase that accounts for rent renewals of 2,476 tsubo, equivalent to 8,187 square meters, or almost 20% of the total rentable area subject to renewal. We will work to further enhance the competitiveness of our properties through effective engineering management and further improve in occupancy rate and cash flow. As for our financing strategy, we have raised the fixed interest rate ratio up to 90.3% while striving to reduce borrowing costs by utilizing interest swap agreement under negative interest circumstances. In this graph, the red line shows the normalized DPU target, in other words, the target to achieve in conditions that exclude extraordinary factors. This target was set at 6,300 yen in the fifth period, at 6,500 yen in the sixth, and at 6,900 yen from the seventh period thereon. However, as the dark blue bar shows it, so far, all targets were overachieved, meaning that DPU is rising favorably. In addition, we are raising the DPU target for the ninth period hereafter to 7,400 yen, a level that we expect to almost achieve considering our current assets. 
Moreover, the rightmost bar shows the DPU value we would reach by 2020, assuming further organic growth. The projected DPU is 7,600 yen. Since it takes internal growth only with rent increase of our current assets to reach this target, I believe we can all agree that there are good reasons to expect even higher DPU if we record also further cost cut, other internal growth and external growth. Here is a track record and schedule of office rent renewals. The three column graphs from the left show the results for the sixth to the eighth period where the blue section represents the increased percentage in the number of tenants which gradually increases with the least area. In red, you can see that rent decreases have been settled at low levels. Although we have been aiming so far at a 10% increase of the blue section against the total leasable area subject to renewal, we achieved the almost double in this period that ended June 2016, which I believe is one reason to think that we really got hold of the rent gap. On the right, the graph between broken lines shows the values of rent renewals scheduled within the next four periods. As you can see, we are aiming at further rent increases. Here we present you the rent renewals and rent increase target for offices. Let's start with the chart on the left. As you can see, the monthly rent increases and decreases upon contract renewals that are shown on the bar graphs. The orange line graph in the middle shows the overall rent increase against all tenants subject to renewal for each period. In other words, you can see how average rent upon contract renewals kept raising by 1.7%, 0.8%, and 1.7% through the recent three fiscal periods. Now, moving to the upper right, here you will find the area of contract renewals and the total rent increase at the moment. Our growth targets are below each of the corresponding arrows, assuming that rents would rise by at least 1% in each future period. The figures below these targets represent the reviewed DPU growth target for both half and cumulative periods. As I mentioned before, given the increasing negative rent gap, we need to stay focused on achieving our targets. I'd like to talk now about our future growth strategies. Firstly, I'd like to get your attention on the essential outline of NRT's portfolio management as described in this slide. In order to maximize unit holders' value on a mid to long term, we strive to maintain and improve the competitiveness of our properties by promoting a trinity management. This trinity management displays a synergy effect between these three sections the Investment Management Department acquiring the properties, the Asset Management Department that manages them, and the Engineering Management Office, or EM Office, that supports both departments based on the characteristics of portfolios centered on small and medium-sized offices. The external growth strategy guarantees discipline in acquiring properties by having the acquisition policy triple checked in terms of property yield, rent level, and tenant diversification. As regards to the internal growth, our strategy is to thoroughly focus on maximizing the NOI by selecting a flexible property manager who meets the specific characteristics of each property at the same time as by promoting upward rent revisions and reducing management costs. Also, we are pushing forward with the minimization of vacancy risks by timely meeting the needs of tenants according to the questionnaire surveys. In the end, it is the EM office, the force that drives these portfolios management forward. The EM office supports both acquisition and management of properties by ensuring property inspections at both stages, which enable us to get a precise understanding of building conditions. This way, instead of leaving the suggestion to property or building managers, we get to take the lead as asset managers and ensure a constantly anticipative management. 
The ability to maintain and enhance the value of small and medium-sized offices partly shows the real value and skills of an AM. Moreover, it feels that the way we carry out these portfolios management to the last detail might be actually our forte. This is a plan to enhance our profitability or NOI through engineering management, which covers three periods, the already completed seventh and eighth, and the current ninth period. The sections within the red border show the new sources of revenue generated through the use of extra space, while the sections within the blue border show the cost reductions that resulted from the adoption of PPSs and LED lighting. Please be provided that all the amounts are per annum contributions, and if we include the effects of the measures to be taken during the current ninth period, we can expect to achieve an annual 100 million yen increase in revenues. I hope you understand that steady activities lead to steady growth of earnings. We will continue to perform an effective engineering management for each of our properties in order to achieve strengthened profitability, cost reduction, and higher tenant satisfaction.